Hey, this is Guy from New Plastic and today we'll make some slushies. It's similar to the snow material we made last time but has a few differences we'll go over. Feel free to check out the frozen pack on my gumroad with all sorts of slushy, melted slushy, snow, dirty snow, snow with rocks and ice materials, all procedural. Link in the description. Also consider supporting the channel on Patreon. You'll get lots of cool stuff and mainly help me make more and better content. Follow me on Instagram at ojang. Subscribe, share, comment, hit the bell, tell someone you love them. Let's go. So I have this slushy swirl model with the snow material we made. Last time I have a big rim light from the right side and a smaller light coming from the left and an interior HDRI. If I turn off the lights you can see its effect. You can pause to see the kernel settings. I'm on linear mode. I compressed highlights, reduced exposure and I have denoiser on. So let's turn our snow material into a slushy material. First thing I'm going to do is reduce the subdivision levels because the model I have has way more polygons than the snowball we had. So as you know, we have our large displacement here mixed with our crystal displacement here. For the slushy material, I honestly don't need more than one noise for the larger displacement. So I'm just going to plug this top noise right into the mix node and delete the second noise and also delete the mix node here. All right, let's solo this noise's gradient node and see what we got. And I'll change the noise type to circular. I'll up the gamma to expand the black parts. I'll bring down omega to have a more uniform noise, but bring up octaves to get more detail. I can also scale it down a little. Nice, let's solo the mix node. And you can see we have the tiny crystal noise mixed in with it. Let's do some edits on it. So I'll bring down omega to make it more uniform increase the contrast and up the gamma by a little bit. Essentially, I'm trying to make it more of a grain texture and less of a fine crystal texture. Let's see how we're looking. And we have a lot of inwards displacement, so I'll change the mid-level in the displacement node to zero, so the blacks don't get displaced inwards and only the white displaces outwards. Looks much better. I'll decrease the brightness of the gradient node on the larger displacement noise. And now I have much less variation in large displacements. So everything is displaced outwards. So let's darken the small grain displacement. And now the effect is much less strong. I want to scale up the grain noise a little bit so we have larger grains. And that looks better, I think. And I'll actually brighten it back up a little to make the grain stick out a little more. Okay, let's remove the float from the random walk albedo and plug the color node into it instead. And let's change the color to some really strong red. Let's bring down bias to zero so we get more of the SSS effect. Radius is fine, but let's bring down density. Now one thing I noticed was that the slushy looks better when the IOR is really low, like unrealistically low. So I'll bring it down to around 1.1 or even less. It's not physically accurate, but the edges of the model get more of that icy look because they become more clear. And because we have the coating layer on with a more realistic IOR, we still get realistic reflections. And let's actually bring down the IOR and the coating layer to about 1.4, which makes sense for water that has lots of sugar in it. The sugar will increase the IOR of the water, which is normally about 1.3. Nice, we're getting somewhere. Let's add the bump. So I'll duplicate this noise, plug the projection to it, add a multiply node and duplicate the noise again with, with the same projection, of course. Now let's plug both of these to the multiply node. I'll just add a gradient to the top noise and we'll plug the whole thing to the bump channel. Let's solo it and I'll scale down the bottom noise. I'll up the omega for more distortion and in the top one I'll change to Perlin type, up the omega and the contrast and I'll actually scale it down, bring the gamma to about one to get an even spread of whites and blacks and actually bring contrast down to make it less sharp. The black parts of this noise are going to overlay on the bottom fine noise and kind of add more variety to it so it won't be spread equally across the whole model. And I'll also plug it into the coating bump. Maybe make the coating layer a bit less rough. Okay, we definitely have a slushy here. That looks good. Let's make the blacks on the top bump noise brighter so we get a bit more of the bottom fine noise. And I'll copy the color node in the medium, plug it into the radius and make it very light pink which will give a slight tint to the edges of the model. But now the model is a bit more opaque, so I can bring down the density slightly to compensate for that. And if you want to learn more about all these SSS settings, uh, check out the SSS deep dive video I made. And last thing, I'll add a gradient node to the coating layer, choke the blacks to make it much more contrasty. And I think I can scale down this grain noise just a bit. Mm -hmm. I'll scale it down even more. 
And yeah, I think it looks much better. I mean, this is up to you. Some slushies are ground up more fine than others. So this noise will dictate how fine the ice particles are. So let's say we want a more organic and less uniform type of slushy. I'll use this sphere with a displace deformer I have here. Uh, let's duplicate the material. And the first thing I'll do is increase the contrast on the large displacement to get more large deformations. Let's scale up the noise and actually make the whites even brighter for more contrast. Mm, that's not enough. So let's make the gradient almost full black and white to really get the most contrast we can. I want to really deform the surface on a macro level. So I'll even increase the displacement height. Okay, that's more like it. I'll up the mid-level to about 0.2. So the overall size of the ball doesn't change that much. As you can see, we get relatively the same scale. I'll brighten up the blacks of the fine grain noise. Okay, now I want to make the surface a bit less rough on the lowest parts of the model. If you think about it, the lower parts is where the liquid kind of pulls up, so the ice has more liquid in it than the parts that stick out, which will make them less rough. So to get access to the lower parts, I'll add a dirt node. I'll remove the transmission for a second so I can plug in the dirt node to the albedo and see how it looks. And I'll add a gradient node. Okay, let's up the strength all the way, up the radius, up the details. I'll chuck the whites on the gradient, then combine it with the previous bump system using a multiply node and plug that into the bump channels. Let's plug it also into the albedo channel. Okay, the whole bump system seems a bit too dark. Let's go to the gradient node of the fine grain bump noise, the one on the bottom, and make both knots brighter. Now the bump noise is brighter and we can see the blacks from the dirt node being multiplied over it, making the lower parts of the model more black and therefore less bumpy. Great, let's remove that from the albedo and bring back the transmission. And it's a subtle detail, but it adds realism in my opinion. And we're pretty much done. Of course, if you want to make the slushy have less flavor, almost like it started to melt a little bit, uh, simply lower the density on the medium channel. And you can see the edges get more transparent as if the food coloring liquid has melted away from it. And in the next tutorial, I'll show you how to create a slushy that actually melted significantly where the top parts are totally icy and the bottom has pools of colored liquids. It's a slightly different and more complex process and I'm absolutely sure that you all know that look when you forgot about the slushy and it started melting and then you took a few sips and completely drained the top parts of the sugary coloring. Uh, makes me feel like a 10 year old again. I love it. So yeah. Shout out to my beloved patrons and members, Yining Gong, Gam Lopez, The Great Wanderer Studios, Dave Toro, Celia Lopez, Nob, Marie Robbins, Svoyas Chari, Aryaman Munish, Teza Jing, Kim Doyon, Wei Kai Zhang, Eric Hu, Elisa, Invader, Daniel Larry, Anthony Gargas, Thomas, Chowan, Baitam Ai, Minky Kim, Zoen, Unique, Elad, 3D Monkey Biz, Chris Schultz, Arlen, Kiki Lem, Suki Violet Sue, The 22 Design, Joel Rieger, Adrian Desilet, Studi Image, Matus Jedrzejewski, Vasco Gross, Blue Hamel, Marco Kragen, Arkady Ulitsky, Fausto Furioso, Joshua Akoi, Jawi Ding, Zeming Wang, Punksicorn M Siri, Ali M, Webb, Kong Idiot, Derek Schultz, Nicolas Federico Vasquez, Matty de Gueldre, Yan Jung, and everybody else on the list, I couldn't have done this without you. Go check out the Frozen Pack on my Gumroad if you need it. Consider subscribing to the Patreon for even bigger support. I love you. Have a great day. Peace.